This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Let's jump in. I am Gary Seegers. I'm your host. This is Winning Cures Everything. Daily show on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and a daily podcast. Lasts about 10 to 15 minutes. If you haven't seen it before, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button. Let's jump in. Here are today's topics for Thursday, February the 14th, Valentine's Day. We're going to talk New Jersey limiting high school football practice. We're talking Adam Silver, possibly contacted by NFL owners about being the commissioner for that league. The AAF Week 2 odds. New Jersey sports betting handle in January. The revenue is crazy. You know how I like to jump on that. If you've listened to the show before, I'm all into the numbers on that. And I've got five college basketball picks. Went three and four last night. We're still above 55%. We're right around 56 So, we're jumping back in. The only way to get off of a slide, keep betting. Keep betting. You, you, you can't win if you don't play, right? So, let's jump in. The show is always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six wonderful sports books. You can go check out more information on all six of them over at tunicatravel.com. Let's jump in. Uh, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show on Twitter at GaryW, uh, sorry, excuse me, at Winning Cures. Or you can just go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything over there. You can follow us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast on Apple uh, Podcast, Google Podcast, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Hit subscribe on YouTube, leave some comments, share the show out, tell everybody about it. Let's jump in. First topic, New Jersey limiting high school football practice. This was from the New York Times, read it this morning. Uh, Basically, full contact practice time has gone from 90 minutes, which is what it's been for several years now, down to 15 minutes a week. Now, that is full contact. That is tackling. I don't know how you're supposed to be able to get used to tackling in 15 minutes. I mean, you want to talk about offenses being able to go up and down the field? Now, this is just high school football, but eventually stuff like this will trickle into college, will trickle into uh, professional football, and yes, we've seen some games where defenses are better, i.e. the Super Bowl, right? But when it comes down to it, the majority of these teams, the majority of the games, you will have a Rams-Chiefs game that is 54-51, right? Because people, you can't learn how to tackle if you are not tackling. So it is going to completely change the game of football. I'm curious to see how many more states will move into this. I don't know right now what's going to happen. The, the people in charge in New Jersey say that there are other states that are looking at this. Everybody is afraid of head injuries. Basically, we're going to be playing flag football pretty soon. That's what it boils down to. So everybody's worried about uh, safety risks and it's completely understandable, but the game of football is a violent game. It just is what it is. One of the things that they are doing this for, in 2017, participation in high school football dropped 1,700 players. That is a 6.8% decrease. Now, the numbers have not come in for 2018 yet. I would imagine it dropped even more, right? We talked on the show back a couple of weeks ago about the talent pool in the Pac-12 because of people in California uh, that are not letting their children play football. Everybody is worried about their kids getting hurt. We didn't have this problem when I was a kid. It was send them out in the yard, let them go play, you know, and and they had different names for it, but where you toss the, the ball in the air and everybody just tackles the guy who has the ball. They don't do that anymore. Kids stay inside. They play video games. Everybody wants to uh, not be active for the most part, right? Technology has changed everything, including the game of football. It's all just a trickle-down effect. Uh, I'm curious to see what happens with this, but New Jersey made it official. They are going from 90 minutes of practice time a week down to 15 minutes of full contact practice time. That is that's a big difference, big difference. And so if you thought kids didn't know how to tackle now, There's no chance they're going to in the future. Uh, Next topic, Adam Silver was contacted by NFL owners. 
Several NFL owners have tried to persuade Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, to jump ship, jump over to the NFL, and be the NFL commissioner. No, I don't know that he would be any better than Roger Goodell. I don't know of many people that could be worse than Goodell. But Silver is really good at jumping out in top or in front of topics that could end up leading to bad things for his league. Right? He was all over the legalized gambling. He made sure that his league was set up and ready to be a part of it. And along with that, I mean, they have done referee accountability which is something that the NFL to this day still does not allow very much transparency at all on that. Uh, He's jumped into eSports like full on. NBA 2K is a massive game, and I don't have the numbers. I would imagine Madden is bigger, and there are bigger Madden tournaments and whatnot. But the NBA game, there are people that feel like they are a part of that league because of that. I mean, NBA teams have their own eSports leagues, that play NBA 2K 18, 19, whatever it is, right? Uh, on top of that, patch ads. Uh, he made sure to jump into... I mean, the, the revenue for the league itself has, like, skyrocketed ever since he took over. It The evalu- or the valuations, the money that these teams are worth now, is like four or five times what it was before he took over as commissioner. He has found ways to make this league relevant, to get big-time TV contracts, to keep people talking about his league. I, I think he'd be great for the NFL. But some people might not agree. If you don't agree, leave some comments or hit us up on Twitter. Either one, I would like to hear why you don't think he would be very good. I do think he would work out very well because he is a proactive commissioner. Roger Goodell is not that. He is so far from that, it's not even funny. Uh, Next topic up, AAF Week 2 odds. We saw a lot of line movement because of the original numbers last week. Those initial numbers did come down some. Now that people have seen teams, it is overreaction time. You've only seen them once. It's time to jump in and, and take advantage of some of these. On Saturday, the Salt Lake Stallions are at the Birmingham Iron. The Iron are a seven point favorite. That line has come down from eight. Now, People are still getting used to the rules. Seven and six and a half used to be key figures for the NFL, college football, etc. Because after a touchdown, you kick an extra point. Seven, that's uh, maybe still a key figure, but it's easier to jump over that because anytime you score a touchdown in this league, you have to go for two. It changes the dynamic of the scoring. So you're not going to see 21 to 14. You're going to see 24 to 6, 24 to 8, 24 to 11, something like that. And so it, it changes things. Uh, but the Birmingham Iron, seven point favorites at home against the Salt Lake Stallions. Uh, the Stallions played at the Arizona Hot Shots last week, who everybody regards as the best team in the league. They got beat by 16, but I don't know. I, I think Salt Lake can end up being pretty good. Uh, Over under on that game is 44. The, the totals have dropped a lot, uh, mainly because we had three unders hit in week one, and they weren't even close. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Arizona Hot Shots, minus 13 at the Memphis Express. Uh, the Express are considered to be one of the worst teams in the league, probably, probably bottom, maybe second to last, mainly because the offense is terrible. They don't have any deep threats at receiver. Christian Hackenberg cannot read a defense to save his life. And Zach Stacy, while he is a serviceable running back, eh, I mean, it, he's okay, right? It, I don't think he's going to kill any defenses. So we'll see what, uh, what Mike Singletary has in store for Rick Neuhausel's bunch. But the Hot Shots, 13-point favorites at Memphis. The over-under is 46. I think the majority of that is people thinking the Hot Shots could absolutely blow them out of the water and score 46 themselves. But we'll see. Sunday, the Orlando Apollos, that is Steve Spurrier's team, Minus six at the San Antonio Commanders. The over-under is 44.5. Spurrier put up 40 points in week one. Granted, the Atlanta Legends are another one of those one or two or three worst teams in the league. So, we'll see. I mean, they won 40-6 to six last week. Uh, they are a six-point favorite on the road at San Antonio this week. Finally, the Atlanta Legends, again, 
one of the worst teams in the league, at the San Diego Fleet. The Fleet are nine and a half point favorites at home. Over under is 42 and a half. Uh, I will give out some picks tomorrow on these. I think the overreaction is pretty crazy. Um, but the Orlando Apollos, like only being a six point favorite, even on the road, like they look like the best team in the league to me last week. I could be wrong about that, but we'll see. Uh, next topic before we get to college basketball picks New Jersey sports betting in January. This is from LegalSportsReport.com. Great site. Go check those guys out. Uh, New Jersey online gambling. Now, this is just online gambling. Hit $33.6 million profit in January. That is profit. That's crazy. The sports gambling handle hit a record $385 million in January. Now, that's just the handle. That's the amount of money that was actually bet. It was an $18.8 million profit. In January, $15.5 million of which came online. Now, the $385 million, Nevada's handle was $418 million. Nevada has long been held as the gold standard as where everybody goes to sports gamble, right? New Jersey is going to beat them. And a lot of this, I don't know if you realize it, Las Vegas' population, the greater Las Vegas area, about 2 million people. New Jersey... The state itself has over 8 million people in population, not to mention Philadelphia, which is 1.58 million, and New York City, which is 8.62 million. That's all within a a two-and-a-half-hour drive of Atlantic City. And it's not just Atlantic City that has casinos. I mean, you go across state lines, you can mobile wager. So very soon, like this population of, of over 18 million around New Jersey, uh, they are going to absolutely murder Las Vegas eventually just because of the population. Yes, there's a lot of people that travel into Vegas that just come in for entertainment's sake just to go and gamble, just to go and hang out, see the shows, etc. It is the vacation capital of the world. But New Jersey, where you can do it all the time, Chris Christie knew what he was doing when he fought this uh, the PASPA, right? Uh, next topic up, the college basketball picks. Okay, look, we have had a bad run the last couple of days. Went 2-5 and five, uh, on Tuesday night. Went 3-4 and four last night. That is 5-9 and nine over the last two days. Now, before that, we were 7-3. and 7-3-1. Three. Seven, three and one. So, we are getting it back this evening. We are 130, 105, and 4 on the season. That is 55.32%. We're jumping back up. We got to get up to 57%. That's where I want to be for the season. Anything over 52%, by the way, is profit. So we're in on that. Let's let's go on and jump in tonight. Tonight's games, I got Montana as a pick'em at Weber State. There's no real advantage at home for Weber State. Montana has won seven straight games. Rotation number on that, 679, by the way. Montana is rolling right now. I don't look for them to stop here. I think they win this game. Next one up, rotation number 616. UConn plus nine at home against Houston. I know you're thinking, you're nuts. You're crazy. What are you doing? Why would you pick anybody against Houston right now? They're killing it. This line has been absolutely inflated because Houston has been so dominant. UConn is playing better. They they play significantly better at home. They have been blowing teams out up in stores, Connecticut. Houston going in, that's a long, long flight. That's a long way to go from Houston, Texas, up to stores, Connecticut. I think Houston probably wins the game. I think this is a closer game. I think UConn keeps it within the nine. We're going UConn tonight. Over 150, uh, rotation number on this, 609. Uh, Over 150 on IUPUI against Youngstown State. We're going... Over 129.5 on Delaware at Towson. That is uh, rotation 613. And then finally, rotation 669. We're going Belmont minus 12.5 at Tennessee State. Belmont 7-1-1 against the spread as a favorite on the road. Tennessee State, not really good at home. They've got a losing record against the spread at home. Uh, They're not very good as an underdog either. So we're rolling with Belmont here. They have been smoking teams here lately. 
As always, you can get the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Just go up to the navigation bar, click on gambling picks. They'll be right there every single day. Just look at the little spreadsheet. We got everything in there, including the rotation numbers in case you want to see them. So, as always, go check out the picks from there. Uh, You can look down in the description. The link is there as well if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook. As always, hit that share button. Tell everybody about the show. Come in every day. We do this for about 15 minutes every single day. Come in, check it out. We appreciate you guys. We will see you again tomorrow.